Hey, um, I finally got my brain kind of in gear enough to make a video, so this is long overdue, but uh, as you see, I'm going to talk about Tommy's Pizza. I'll probably also talk about other styles of pizza because I just want to let it flow. So enjoy. Um, hopefully this will be helpful. Uh -uh. Yeah, so I just got, uh, I had this pizza yesterday from Tommy's. It's a cheese pizza, a large cheese pizza. And I'm going to show you some pieces and some components um, of the pizza that's been sitting out for 24 hours and been reheated. It was really ugly. It was not uh, one of their best pizzas, but um, it's still Tommy's and it still has Tommy's characteristics. And, you know, sometimes you go there and you'll get a great pizza and sometimes you'll go there and you'll get a not, not so great pizza. And hopefully I'll tell you why, because I think I know, but um, give me a second, we'll get started. All right, I haven't made a pizza in almost five years. So um, this is everything I'm saying here, or most of it is what my brain has figured out while not making pizzas. But I've been a pizza consumer. I've eaten a lot of pizza from around Columbus. You know, Tommy's is my favorite. I, I think it's pretty safe to say that. And people know me for Tommy's. Tommy's been dead for a while. Probably not many other people knew anything about the pizza other than here's what you do to make it. And unless you're a pizza freak or a pizza geek like this guy, um, you're not gonna figure it out. Anyway, here is a piece of Tommy's pizza. Um, it's a 14, it's from a 14 inch cheese pizza. I used to get pepperoni pizzas from Tommy's, but now I prefer to get cheese. Um, although the pepperoni, which is Ezo or Ezo, is excellent pepperoni. It's just overpowering. I'm sick of pepperoni. Here is one piece, and I'll maybe show you other pieces or bitten pieces because those sometimes are the best ones but um okay i don't know can you see that you can kind of see that it's layered laminated a little bit and the term laminated it i've never heard the term laminated in a pizza joint i made that term up myself but I think there may have been two other people who used it before me, people on pizzamaking.com, and that would be uh, Fazari or Fazari or however you pr pronounce that. Um, and uh, his name is John Fazari, Fazari, and he lives in Eastern Washington. And he runs a pizza joint called Fazari's or Fazari's, and I'll, I'll have to make up my mind which to call it, but uh, maybe he'll correct me. Um, and it's, uh, it, it's a laminated, laminated pizza is really popular on the West Coast. Now, I don't know if it started here and then made it to the West Coast in time for the founding of Shakey's and, uh, Round Table and the other ones out there that are popular.
Shakey's, in a lot of ways, is really similar to what you'll get in Columbus. Pizza in Columbus is a lot different than pizza in Pittsburgh. I think. I haven't had a lot of pizza in Pittsburgh, but I have had some. And I have seen stuff about Pittsburgh, Vinnie, Vinnie Pie, um, which I think is really popular in Pittsburgh. And it's all either New York style or based on New York style. What you get in Columbus is not based on New York style. It's based on Sheeter. Sheeter. Um, you almost can't get a pizza at a local place in Columbus that's not sheeted, that doesn't have sheeted dough. Um, so here's a little history. Um, the three oldest pizza chains or pizza joints, I guess they're all chains, in Columbus are, I think Massey's is the oldest, then um, Donato's and Tommy's, they're right, right around the same time. They were all found right around the same time in the 50s, probably early 50s. I don't know of anything in Columbus that was around before that. I know there was pizza before that, um, but I don't know much. I really don't know any more than that. So I think what happened is when I think p pizza became popular in Columbus at the same time that uh, electric sheeters became available. And I don't know, because I don't know when electric sheeters became available. But um, it's pretty much a necessity if you're making Columbus-style pizza. And there may be actually a Columbus style of pizza. Um, I'm not sure. I wish I had eaten more pizza around the country when I was out traveling. But I just wasn't as into it then as I am now. That was up. To 2007 to 2010 or 11 and that's right about even though I had been making pizza for over 10 years at that point um as a hobby uh, you know and I'm, I'm really uh what's the word I'm looking for I'm a fanatic I'm I'm a, a geek pizza geek so um Two th late 2010 is when I first got involved with uh, pizzamaking.com or started being active on the message boards. And one of the first things I did was re responded to a thread in the cracker section um, about Tommy's Pizza. I think it's called Tommy's Pizza Columbus, Ohio something like that. And uh, the thread was started by a user named Brightarian. He mentioned that his wife came up for an Ohio, Ohio State football game and went to Tommy's. And that's something you do. Tommy's is slammed on Ohio State football Saturdays. Because um, there are two, if you don't know, there are two Tommy's locations on Lane Avenue. Um, which is near Ohio Stadium. There's a location on campus, which is near High Street, on uh, Lane Avenue near High Street. And that one is probably busy, busier right around before the game might start. And uh, then there's another one, I think it's about two miles west on Lane Avenue in Upper Arlington. And I would imagine that one is busier after the games when people are leaving. You know, when you're getting 105, 107,000 people out of a stadium, traffic isn't really fun. And um, 
So a lot of people probably go to Tommy's after the game to just let the traffic clear out. And um, anyway, there's, that's a little history that I know and or stuff like that. Um, if I was going to make a Tommy's pizza right now, here's what I would do. I would make my dough. And I, I don't have a recipe. I'm just going to give you uh, baker's percentages. So um, if you don't understand baker's percentages, Google it. It's really easy to learn. It takes a little time to get used to, but I'm not going to give you volumetric measurements like cups or teaspoons um, because one, tea, one cup of flour is not the same amount of flour as one cup of flour. One ounce of flour is one ounce of flour. Now, there are some limitations of uh, baker, using baker's percentages, which you don't really know until you, you may not still know, but I realized when I moved here, I think it was like seven years ago, um, and I was still walking with a cane at that point, um, the water here, is much different than my mom and dad's water. And it makes a difference with pizza. And if I use the same dough formula here and there, um, you know, I make dough at the same time at both places using the exact same dough formula, the dough is not gonna be the same. Because here, I need to use a little more water. I need to, the percentage, if I'm making a pizza here, the hydration percentage has to be, I don't know, 3% higher here. And here I have Columbus water. My mom and dad have a well water with uh, a softener. So um, you can really tell. Because I used to, I remember, I used to make my New York style pizzas there with like, 58 maybe even 56 percent hydration and part of that is because they were a little stiff the dough was a little stiffer than it should have been because i was learning and part of it is that the water is softer um i think i mean that's how it all i've added it up in my head But um, if you're making pizza in the same place all the time and you use baker's percentages, you're going to have the same dough all the time. If I go across the street to my neighbors, I can use the same exact formula because they got the same water. Um, but if I go out to my mom and dad's house, I'm going to have to use more water. And um, here's something that's really important with Tommy's. Several years, 10 years ago, I don't know, close to 10 years ago, I went to Tommy's and I did a little dumpster diving. At least I, I dove into, I didn't actually dive into it, I just kind of stood outside. But I found, I went to the cardboard um, container, not the trash container. Trash isn't going to do me any good. Um, but in the cardboard container, I found the pepperoni, which is Izo or Ezo. I'm, I don't know how you pronounce that. Um, G Antonio. I don't know if you pronounce it that way too. I'm, I'm not Italian. Okay. So pepperoni is G Antonio from Izo or Ezo. And the sauce base is crushed tomatoes from I can't remember, but it's packed by the Herzl Canning Company of Toledo or something like that. So, um, what I've used for a sauce when trying to clone Tommy's is uh, another sauce that's packed by the same company. And it might be the same sauce or same uh, tomato pro product. 
I don't know, but it's, uh, I think it's called Dei Fratelli, D-E-I, that's how you spell Dei, I, you know, that's like Latin, and it's called Dei Fratelli Crushed Tomatoes, and I don't even know of another tomato product of that consistency that you can get at the grocery store. I mean, you can get a ton of it from a distributor, but you're gonna have to buy a ton of it and you don't have to do that at the grocery store. So, um, that's a good starting point for sauce. Dave Fratelli, unless I got it wrong, um, crushed tomatoes. And I'm just gonna leave it at that for now. The um, the flour is um, it's a house brand from the distributor that Tommy's works with. As is the cheese, and it's provolone, of course. Everything in Columbus is provolone. Almost everything in Columbus is provolone, but uh, and that's one of the things that makes Columbus pizza different than, say, Shakey's or Round Table. I think they both use mozzarella and you know of course they cut into slices or wedges and anything you get in Columbus that started in Columbus is gonna be in squares it's gonna I think you know what I mean but um while I'm thinking about it Tommy's large pizza 14 inch even though the menu says 15 it's 14 I you're gonna it's gonna be cut different every time you get one but i think the most common way to cut a tommy's pizza is three cuts by four cuts so you have a halfway point one way so you can do your half and half and um and you and you cut right in the middle and right above and then right below and then you turn it 90 degrees and you cut it four times sometimes it, it comes cut into six or seven pieces, so they're really thin, like a Donato's or Massey's. Um, anyway, let's see what I can re remember to say. I, that separation right there at the end, um, where my hand is, that is from the uh, lamination or the layers. Here's an important thing. Tommy's pizza is not docked. I probably already knew that, but I've had a little bit of a conversation with someone who used to work at Tommy's um, on my one of my videos, I think. Uh, the laminated cracker video I made which is sort of based on Tommy's but it's and I say Tommy's in it several times but it's not I wasn't going for Tommy's when I made that I was just I was going for something like that but it had been a long time since I'd done anything when I made that so I kind of couldn't here's the dough formula that I would use if I was going to make Tommy's today. And I'll try to remember, you know, there are some exceptions. Like, you know, if I make it in here, I'm going to start out with 48% water or hydration. Now, if I was at my mom and dad's house using the well water, I would probably, I would probably bump that down to 45. And that's probably still too much, but we don't have sheeters. We have to roll with this. And that's a lot of work. And um, so I think it's best to kind of start with a softer dough when you're not as experienced. And then once you get to know more about it and have the balls to try to roll it, then you can try lower hydration dough. I've seen dough as low as at least 35, maybe even lower than that. And that's Fazari. 
Um, it might actually be the dough. He has shared the formula or recipe for the dough they make. And that's why I like this guy. He's a lot like me. He, does, he doesn't want to keep everything a secret. He'll tell you everything. And I'll tell you everything. I know. Um, as long as I can remember. And um, there's still only going to be about, be about five people who make it. I mean, even if I had my own pizza joint, I would tell, at least make a video. It's Nobody's going to put the effort into trying to do what you do if you're selling pizza. Um, it's a lot of work to do in your home. But if you're like me, and there aren't many people like me, and people watching this video are those people. If you're like me, it's worth it. I don't have to go to Tommy's because I can make Tommy's. I still do. And that's another point. I still do. Um, I don't have to go to Donato's and I know their, their sauce is very easy. Um, you just have to get the right product and I can't think of what it is right now, but I know if you get Kroger paste, Italian style and add some water to it so it's pretty soupy and just a little bit of basil maybe some salt maybe some sugar you can make a very very good Donato's I mean it tastes just like Donato's um, but there's also another brand I it's either Hunt's or Heinz and I think it is labeled as sauce and it's good pretty much straight out of the can. It might be the exact same tomato product that Donato's actually uses. Um, I'll try to remember to get that clarified, but um, all right, dough formula. Mm, okay. Ideally, you're going to use the flour that they use, but I don't know if any of us can get that without having our own pizza joint or knowing someone. Um, but, uh, and I think that makes a huge difference. I think that's why when you have the right ingredients... It makes a huge difference. And I've learned that because I've used a lot of different flowers. You know, for New York style, I've used all trumps and I've used full strength. And they are very similar. They're both very acceptable for New York style. And hopefully if I can get some strength back and make pizza again, I will try New York style with all trumps because I believe they sell all trumps at GFS, Gordon Food Service, the marketplace. They may even have full strength, but I'm inclined to think that if you go to New York, get a slice of pizza, a really good slice, it, the flour will be all trumps, which is really high gluten. I mean, that stuff's basically for bagels. I mean, really stretchy, chewy kinds of things. But it's used a lot for pizza as well. And, you know, sometimes you can figure out who uses it by paying attention to who the supplier is. Like Giuseppe's. They used to go through RDP. Um, also, fuck RDP. Um... And I know because I used to buy from RDP a lot that their flour would either be all Trumps or I think the other one they have is uh, full strength. I'm way off track. Um, dough formula. 100% flour, uh, high gluten flour. If you can't get a specific brand of flour, 
that's the next option, get high gluten. Um, I don't know if all Trump's high gluten flour would work for this, but maybe I'll try. I, I really hope I can try. I hope I make pizzas again. Um, that's one of my, one of my goals. Um, okay, 100% flour, high gluten, 48% water. Um, what else have we got here? Yeast. I haven't used instant yeast much, but I'm going to say use instant yeast. And common belief is that you have to make, uh, you have to change, you know, if you're using instant yeast versus active dry, you're going to have to use a different amount. But after I changed to instant yeast with my last several pizzas, I try, I followed that conversion, which is like use, you have to use less of it. But I think that's based on volumetric. If you use, if you measure your yeast by weight, I don't think there's any conversion at all. So um, that's another thing I wanna do a lot with is using instant yeast instead of active dry, which is what I've used mostly. But there, it takes more work to use active dry and with instant yeast, you just add it to your flour or your dough mix when you're mixing. But um, I'm gonna say 1%, possibly 1.5% yeast. Instant yeast. Then um, my normal starting point for salt is 1.5% or 1.75%. I'm inclined to think Tommy's has less salt than that. And here's a trick. If you want a sweeter tasting dough, adding sugar to it is not going to help. Here's what you want to do. You want to decrease the salt. So if I wanted a New York style dough that tasted sweeter than, than normal, I would cut my salt in half or use no salt. Um, when I make deep dish, I don't use salt because I have looked up, just Google Malnati's to go or Lou to go or something. Um, you can see the packaging and it says, it tells you the ingredients for their dough. There's five ingredients, flour, water, yeast, corn oil, and olive oil which I just, I put all the oil as corn oil. It's, why use two different kinds of oil? That makes no sense. Um, you know, it, little tricks like this can save you a lot of trouble. And a lot of people are afraid to make deep dish dough with no salt. Um, and I understand that, but I wasn't one of those people and I tried it and that makes a huge difference. But Tommy's, I'm thinking it's a little more bland than say New York style. So I, I might change this by the end of the video, but um, I'm gonna say start at one one percent salt. Yeah, I think having the right flour would make a lot of difference. I just wish I knew how to get it. Um, Cause 
Can you hear that crackling? See little pieces falling off? That's from lamination. And I wanted to make this simpler than I am, but my brain does what it wants. All right. 100% flour, 48% water, 1%. Instant yeast, 1%. Salt. And then we got two more things. Tommy's uses, I, I know this because I've had people who work there confirm it. But they use malt syrup or malt powder. I don't know, maybe both. For a long time, I thought that was the key ingredient that was what I needed to um, get the blisters that you often see this one isn't really blistered which is good for a long time I thought Tommy's should be blistered that they were going for that but now I realize the blisters on Tommy's if you get a Tommy's and it has blisters you probably got it at night that's a doe skin that has been sitting there for several hours and the yeast is producing air and the air gets caught between the layers or laminations and um, it makes little blisters. There are other ways to get blisters probably not the same kind of blisters but that is why you get blisters on Tommy's okay so one percent malt syrup or one percent sugar and I don't know if that's a one-to-one -one kind of thing but now I don't think the malt syrup is as important anymore because, I mean, there's a smell. When you walk up to Tommy's, at least in Upper Arlington, there's a smell outside. It smells like Tommy's. And that's what I expect when I get Tommy's. I expect it to taste like that. Malt syrup might be important, but I'm going to go ahead and say it's not. So instead of 1% malt syrup, I'm going to say use 1% sugar. This doesn't seem to have had a lot of sugar in it. Probably less than 1% because it doesn't have that, uh, that browning that is really characteristic of sugar. I mean, it has some browning, but not that kind of browning. And did I forget something? Oil. Oil. Um, I don't know exactly if there's a specific kind of oil. I don't think it really matters. So, at this point, just go with 2% uh, vegetable oil or 3%. It's, I'm sure it's in that neighborhood. I've used a lot higher. I think my former best yet recipe probably calls for more like 5% or higher, that's too much. Um, in the years since I made my last pizza, I've learned, I had all this information crammed in here, but I didn't really understand it how I need to until I stopped making pizza because I stopped being able to. And became more of a... I stopped being a pizza maker and started being a pizza consumer. I've eaten a lot of Tommy's and a lot of Donato's and a lot of Massey's and a lot of Giuseppe's. Um, some flyers. Some other stuff, that mainly those. Those are Columbus or Southwestern Columbus places. But... Uh, you know, and one thing I figured out 
and I may have said this already, but basically everything that comes from Columbus is laminated. And this is important. I don't think anyone ever came out and went, I want to make a laminated pizza to sell at my pizza joint that we're opening here in 1952. I don't think they knew anything about it. I don't think Tommy knew crap about pizza. It's just that in the 1950s in Columbus, you know, it's not like there are a bunch of Italians here. Pizza was new. Yeah, I don't think Tommy... What's his last name? No, that's another place. Um, Iacono. Tommy Iacono. I don't think Tommy Iacono knew very much about pizza. He just is like, hey, let's let's make this new stuff and sell it. People will love it. And I don't know if, you know, it's obviously an Italian name. It's not like pizza in the United States is Italian. It may have been brought here by Italians, but being Italian does not make anyone know anything more about pizza because pizza in the United States is nothing like pizza in Italy. And I've never had pizza in Italy, but I've, I know a little bit about it. Um, you know, just, this isn't New York style. New York style originally was probably intended to be like Italian pizza, but you know, wood fired ovens probably weren't as available at the time in New York City.